So I want to look at adding mouse controls to your games. And what I want to do is we're going to track the mouse movement on the screen. So what I want to do is when you move the mouse, I want to set the title bar to be the current location of the mouse. This is useful as you're developing your projects to know where you want to put things on the screen. You'll know uh, pixel perfect what coordinates are where. And it's a really useful tool to have. The second thing I want to do is I want to look at clicking on the window and placing an object where you click. So the first thing I want to do is uh, look at the Java documentation. And what we want to do is look at the information that we need to do this. So the, uh, this is the 1.8 Java API. And if we look in Java AWT event, and then in the event, we're looking for mouse listener and mouse motion listener. And these are the two libraries that are going to give us the information that we need to work with the mouse. You'll notice also there is a mouse wheel listener. Uh, I'm not going to look at that today, uh, but just be aware that that's there. So if you wanted to have controls based on the mouse wheel, you could go look at that and add those features to your programs. So the first one I want to look at is the mouse motion listener, because that will help us look at the pixels at the screen. Uh, this is the mouse motion listener, and you'll notice that it's an interface. Interface is kind of like a contract or a uh, like a template. It tells you what it's expecting to see when you create an object of this type, but it doesn't actually have any implementation. Uh, it's basically a guideline or a blueprint to get started. Uh, and if you go down and look at the method summary, you're going to see the two functions that uh, the Java library expects to see when you create something of a mouse motion listener type. And in this case, there's a mouse dragged function. And this is when you click and drag, and then the mouse moved. Now in this uh, program, we're only going to look at the mouse moved. We're not going to look at mouse dragged. We will look at that in the future, because there's some very cool things that you can do with the mouse dragged function. Uh, and I definitely want to make sure that we look at that at some point in time. The second thing we want to look at is the mouse listener uh, class. In the mouse listener class, and if we scroll down and look at the method summaries, we see there's a mouse clicked, a mouse entered, mouse exited, mouse pressed, and mouse released. The clicked is a full cycle of pushing and releasing a button. The mouse entered is when the mouse comes from off the screen into your window. Mouse exited is when the mouse leaves the window. Uh, and then mouse pressed is the act of pushing the button down. And mouse released is when you uh, remove your hand from the button. Now, it is important to note that this will trigger no matter which button you press. Now, you can uh, request which specific button was pressed, but I'm not going to cover that in this tutorial. So now that we've looked at the documentation, we know kind of what we need. We're going to be using mouse moved and mouse clicked. Uh, I've created some basic code to get started with. Uh, because this is kind of time consuming, I want to make sure that we have a good starting point. And this is pretty much going to be template code that I'm going to be using for most of uh, the examples here on out. So the first thing we have here are three libraries, AWT, Swing, and Java.AWT event. And then we create uh, a J panel, and we're calling this uh, program mouse. Now I've moved the declaration of the JFrame into the instance variable slots of this. And the reason I've done this is because I want access to this JFrame to be able to reset its title bar. And by making it an instance uh, variable, it's going to be easier to access that. Uh, now, I would be able to access it otherwise, but just to make sure, I want to make sure I have open access to it because I might want to refactor this code and be able to use that elsewhere. Uh, and then I have an X and Y position here. That X and Y position is going to be the location of an object on the screen that we're going to work with. Now I want to do add one other uh, variable in here, and that's going to be a point. Point is an object in the AWT library that is an X and Y coordinate. And what I want is the mouse's location. So I'm going to create point mouse, and we're going to start that at 0, 0. Now this is going to change as soon as we start running the program. Uh, and you'll see that happen. Inside of our constructor, uh, we set the preferred size of the window. Uh, again, you can play around with these numbers. I like 640 by 40. Uh, it's a throwback to when I first started learning how to program. Most of the windows that we did were in this resolution, so I tend to program in those resolutions. Uh, I'm setting the background color to black, just personal preference. 
and then we're creating this frame and I am sending the title to mouse but we will be changing that as soon as we get the mouse input. Uh, we're, we're adding this panel to the frame, packing it, and then setting it visible. Uh, here's our overridden method for uh, paint component. Uh, again, we're uh, painting the background here, and then we're going to draw a green circle. Now, one thing I want you to see here is that I've subtracted 25 from both the X and the Y. Uh, basically, what it is, it's half the width and height, so that when we click on the screen, uh, where we click will be the center of where this object is. So this object will be drawn, and it'll simulate that we're in the center of it. Um, and I, I haven't really thought this all the way through. I'm not sure if this is going to be the right way to do it when we talk about collision detection. Uh, but when we get to that, we'll talk more about it. And of course, we have our main method. This is our entry point to the program. And it's decoding our mouse constructor. So let's go ahead and compile and run this and, and make sure that it works. Okay. And there's our mouse. Okay, very good. So now let's go ahead and add the mouse interaction. So I want to go back into my constructor. And the mouse interaction we're going to add directly to the J panel. Uh, and so an interesting thing you'll want to know here is we can add it to the J panel or we can add it to the J frame. However, you're going to get a different frame of reference. The mouse is going to refer to its XY coordinate system based on the component you add it to. So if I added it to the J frame, its X and Y coordinates will be based on that J frame, uh, which uh, the title bar at the top has about a 40 pixel height that we're going to lose resolution in. So it would be better to actually add the mouse listener to the J panel. So here we're going to add that mouse listener to the J panel. Uh, and we're going to do the motion listener first. The way you do that, you say add mouse motion listener. And I'm going to be using an anonymous class for this. Uh, it's called a mouse adapter. Now, there are a thousand ways that we could do this. Mouse adapter is maybe not the most efficient on memory, but it will work. And it's going to give us a special bonus feature that we can interact with the instance variables by doing it this way. Uh, and also, I think the code is a little bit cleaner. Now, in the mouse motion listener, again, we wanted the mouse moved function. that mouse event. Now, you might be asking, well, where is mouse entered, mouse exited? And the thing is, when you create a mouse adapter, the mouse adapter is, it's like a, a Swiss Army tool. It already has all of those implemented for you, and then we can override those functions as we need. This is the only function I want, so by, by using that mouse adapter, I can ignore the other functions. I can add them in if I want them, but I don't need them, so I'm going to ignore them here. So what I want to do is I want to get the location of the mouse from here. So I'm going to set my mouse location. So the mouse point is equal to the mouse event dot get point. This is going to return the X and Y location of where the mouse is at. Next thing I want to do is go ahead and set my title bar. Uh, and I'm going to do this using uh, string formatting. So I'm going to set the location equal to string dot format. And I want it to look like this. It's going to be percent D, so it's an integer percent D integer. So it's kind of like a tuple. Okay, and then I can get that information from my mouse.x and my mouse.y. If you've never used string format before, basically the way that it works is this is a little string that says this is what the string is going to look like. Uh, and the first percent value is going to get the first variable. The second percent value gets the second variable. Okay, and then we want to set the title. So frame.set title to our location. Okay, so let's compile this. Uh, misspell adapter. I misspelled adapter. Alright, so let's try this. And you'll see when I move uh, at the title bar, you'll see the location of the mouse on the screen. Alright, that's cool. So now let's add the mouse uh, button listener. Okay, so just like the mouse motion listener, um, add mouse listener. Okay, new mouse adapter. Spell it right this time. Okay. Mm -mm -mm. And then this time we're going to do mouse clicked.
and uh, when we click, what we want to do is relocate uh, the circle to that location. So we're going to get that point, and x is going to be equal to mouse x, y is equal to mouse y. Now, it's not going to automatically update, so what we need to do is we need to force a repaint of the screen. And again, because this is an anonymous class inside of the mouse class, this repaint will call the paint component, or will call the repaint function for the mouse class, uh, which will drive it to the paint component method. All right. So now, when we run this, you'll see when I click, it really relocates the ball. Okay. All right, so uh, this is a, a really interesting thing that you can add to your programs. Uh, again, try and, and think, how could you use this creatively in the games that you want to write? Could you create a small toy game from this? And what are the interesting things you can do with it? As always, keep coding, have fun, and just enjoy yourself.